Imagine if you want to move and live in Switzerland. And where else? After all, Switzerland is ranked top for safety, per capita income, quality of life and life expectancy, sustainability and capital preservation. But is there a realistic way to move to live in this country? To answer this question, I travel to Zurich, the economic capital of Switzerland. I am Santa and I recommend you the best places to live and invest in real estate. In Zurich, I was lucky to talk to a Swiss tax advisor, Serhi Moliboch, who answered my questions about living in Switzerland, paying taxes and residency. Serhi. Does Switzerland welcome immigrants? It does. Uh, Switzerland actually is a perfect country in terms of living and it understands that it, ha it has to offer something to the world. So that's why it's welcoming the foreigners. The other question is that it's not uh, easy for everyone. So I would say that Switzerland is the most tricky country across Europe to accept immigrants on a permanent basis. However, if you know how it works, it's always possible. <laughs> how rich you have to be to enter Switzerland? Again, there, there is a number of routes. So there are some specific cases, for example, when you're pensioner, when you come from the European Union. Uh, these days, for example, there is a special option for the Ukrainian refugees, just easy entry to the country. However, if you are coming from a third country, for example, United States, Canada, Arab, United Arab Emirates, China, whatever, you have a special regime of so-called lump sum taxation. That basically means that if you're ready to pay the annual tax at certain level, and we can discuss this in more detail later, uh, basically it, it, this will be your entry ticket to the country. And I would say that because the minimum tax tax per annum would be something like 300,000. Uh, that makes you spending your 1% of your wealth if you are like 30 million uh, net worth. So basically, if you're ready to give up 1% of your wealth every year just for your right to stay in Switzerland, that's fine for you. Of course, someone likes Switzerland more and they are willing to pay more. But I would say that the reasonable minimum would be something like 30 million of net wealth. And which contents are most business friendly? From my own experience, and I have uh, cooperated with a number of contents for, for different matters, I would say that we have more or less um, a leader for each language region. So if we are talking about the German part, this would be definitely Zug. They are super open, they are super innovative, there is a number of different conferences held on the annual basis and so on. And the local authorities are actually willing to provide some tax incentives, uh, provide uh, work permits and so on. If we are talking about the French part, this is definitely Canton Vaux, where Lausanne, and Montreux are, are based. Uh, there they have special departments, for example, they're called uh, Innovo, which, which are really offering very interesting conditions to, to accept business and businessmen. Uh, as for the southern part, basically that's Ticino, that's uh, Canton uh, Ticino, and specifically Lugano. The mayor of the city is quite active in attracting business. So I would th say probably those are the three clusters and around them you can find something else, but more or less these um, local uh, authorities are offering the most interesting conditions. Is it true? that you don't pay taxes in Switzerland. Some don't, <laughs> but I would not recommend this because the, um, overall the penalties are quite severe and the tax authorities are very, comp like, they, they are super intelligent in what they're doing and that's why uh, playing games with them is, is quite tricky. Uh, tricky. Uh, what is very important is that Switzerland, uh, despite the common low knowledge of, of even of the consultants, Switzerland is very low in terms of effective taxation. So if you compare personal taxation, for example, like in Switzerland you can pay roughly 20% on average for the normal person uh, and that would be much lower than in, in France with its 50% or Scandinavia with over 60%. Uh, if we are talking about like the VAT for example, the Swiss uh, uh, rate is under 8% compared to 20-25 in Europe. If we are talking about the corporate taxation in Switzerland you can easily pay like 13-15% uh, of corporation tax compared to 20-30 and even 40 in some countries. So I would say that there is a lot of opportunity in terms of uh, optimizing your taxation in a completely legal environment uh, and um, I would say there is a, an opportunity for a, a very uh, wide spectrum of different businesses and setups for holding activities for trading for banking and financial activities you just need to know how it works and basically apply certain specific regimes to your specific case 
how do cantons really differ in terms of doing business, paying tax, quality of life? Actually, that's a very interesting question. Despite the fact that I'm primarily a tax advisor, I'm always saying that uh, taxation is probably criteria number 10 <laughs> in your list of proper questions to decide whether you move uh, to the specific cantor or, or country or not. Uh, because you need to take care about um, geography, climate, languages and so on. So in Switzerland, uh, in, in terms of the language, for example, uh, there are four official languages. Three of them uh, is German, uh, French and Italian. And first of all, you need to understand which environment you will you you will feel better right in terms of taxation again despite um, despite uh, common um, uh, understanding that the taxation is quite low uh, there is not much difference between the cantons so it's a, it's a big mistake to say that some cantons are really better in terms of taxation uh, so I would say that there is no really best choice if you want some drive you want to do more business that's definitely Zurich because it is a, the biggest city by population there's a lot of businesses a lot of opportunities here if you want a relaxed life somewhere in the mountains, that would be something something like Vaux or Valais or whatever. Uh, so uh, it really depends on your behavior, on your plans, on your children, because some, sometimes your children speak one language and you don't have that specific school in a specific region. So, but, but overall, I would say uh, th there is a huge variety. So I love Switzerland uh, as a person who's living there for many years, that you, you can find any, anything. You just need to search well and, and you will be able to really find everything which suits your personal lifestyle. So which Swiss cities are best for foreigners? My personal view is that until certain age, like probably 35 years old, the bigger the city is, the better. Because uh, the, the, the cities, the big cities like uh, Zurich or Geneva provide the, the best concentration of everything, like restaurants, uh, environment, sport, whatever. And even though the infrastructure and transportation system is developed very well, you would like to go out of your building and find something in walking distance. Uh, but I would say uh, probably uh, for people, again, with with a demand of drive and business, Zurich would be choice number one. Zug is, is a big center, but sometimes it's treated a, a business center on paper because there are a lot of companies, but not too many people in the, people in the streets. Uh, if you want a bit more, let's say, touristic style of living, a bit more relaxed one, you would definitely go for Lausanne, Geneva, something southern. Uh, if you're in love with the mountains, you would go somewhere mm, to Interlaken, for example, or St. Moritz, again, some people don't like distanciating from civilization because you will need to uh, every time you want to fly somewhere you need to spend time in, in, in the train or in the car um, of course there is southern part like Lugano or Bellinzona uh, wonderful cities with amazing landscapes a much warmer climate uh, closeness to Italy and the sea uh, to the south uh, but again variety is everything so that's why I'm, I'm pretty sure that if you talk to the people who have certain experience living there they will be able to advise you a lot of interesting things so so there is a choice. Do you have to learn local language to live in Switzerland? I would recommend that you learn it, but you don't have to. <laughs> so if we are talking about, again, big cities, uh, more or less, the majority of people speak English. Even the, uh, let's say, if you are talking about the professions like bankers, uh, uh, office workers, uh, almost everyone speaks fluent English. So that will be enough. Um, of course, they will not speak Ukrainian or Russian uh, or, or Arab, uh, but English norm is normally sufficient to survive. Uh, you would be able to learn some basics of any local language to go to the shop or, or to bring your child to to school or go by transportation but overall it, it's not really a big problem of course if we're talking about long-term integration like for example getting the permanent uh, permit to, to stay in the country or, or even becoming a citizen then uh, it, it gets tricky because there are certain requirements so you have to learn language at certain level normally it's b1 under this standard international categorization but uh, again you don't have to if you just want to stay on on as, as a permanently residing person Person, but without huge plans for the future. So it's, um, it's, it's relatively easy to live here without deep knowledge of the local language. So is there a real chance to become a Swiss citizen in the end? Yeah, I would say that um, 
the timing you have to spend in Switzerland to become Switzerland is probably one of the longest in across Europe. So unlike, for example, Portugal, where you can get citizenship after five or six years, in Switzerland it will take at least 10 years. So there recently have been a reform which basically reduced the timing from 12 years to 10. But normally in most cases when you're coming to a, on a specific temporary regime, it's still 12, right? Uh, but uh, it's possible. Uh, in order to do that, you need to know, have certain loan knowledge of the language, of local culture, how it works, like geography, so there is a special exam to do that. And of course you need to show a certain level of integration. Because if, if you're living in your small apartment and don't going outside, uh, not going outside, uh, then probably it will be very difficult. Because you need to show that you're integrated, that you accepted the local values, that you're behaving well, that you're not a criminal. So that's why uh, I really love Switzerland for being able to assimilate foreigners in a way that they become at at the same level, let's say, let's say, same cultural, like social level, and basically you're, you're boiling in the same system and becoming a better person normally. <laughs> so that's possible. Was it difficult for you to integrate and become a Swiss? Not really, because I'm quite an active person. I do a lot of sports. Uh, I love the environment. Again, the, the variety of choices is amazing. Uh, rock climbing, paragliding, whatever, swimming, running, any, anything you can imagine. And that's why integrating was easier. It's not always necessarily to become like Swiss in a normal understanding, because even Swiss people saying that if they're changing the canton, they cannot integrate because it's so different. So that's why for a foreigner, it's the same problem. But overall, you can stay uh, relatively well and, and feel well in your own environment. Uh, I mean, in the environment of people coming from your motherland, from your country. Uh, there are a lot of nationalities in Switzerland and you can find basically um, person from any part of the world. So what are the main options for relocating to Switzerland? Yeah, let's go from the easiest one to the most difficult one. Uh, first of all, because of the very close relationship between Un European Union and Switzerland, uh, all nationals of the European Union are allowed to come to Switzerland and live there without any specific requirements. So basically, just come, register and you live. And that's one of the options for people from third countries. First, they get the passport of the European Union and then they go to Switzerland. Uh, second option is probably some really specific um, things like, like uh, Ukrainian refugees, for example. So it's a temporary thing but now the uh, country is more or less flooded. It's, it's almost 70,000 of people uh, coming here, and, but, but it's temporary. Uh, another option, uh, I call it a corporate slavery option. Basically, you can come to Switzerland uh, through receiving of the work permit to work for a real employer. So this should be a genuine uh, arrangement. Uh, you need to be paid well. So it should be at least, let's say, 100,000, maybe 120,000 uh, annual salary. Uh, but this is the normal work, so not everyone wants to, to keep working if they have enough money. Uh, there is another option uh, which is for pensioners. Basically, if you are uh, 65 or older and you can prove your close ties to Switzerland, like having a chalet somewhere in the mountains, your children can go to school, you should come here like every uh, summer for some vacation, so you're really close to the country, uh, you can then come as a pensioner because you're not earning anymore, you're not stealing the work workplaces from the locals. Uh, it's quite tricky, but you can still do it. Uh, some cantons, like those I mentioned, uh, for example, Vo, Zug, Ticina, they can offer you interesting conditions to relocate based on the business case. So basically, you can prove that you are creating a, a cool business, it's super innovative, it will create work jobs, you will pay taxes and so on, and then gives you a chance to really get the work permit. So previously, like 10 years ago, that was much, much easier. Now it's uh, much more difficult, but it's still possible if, you, if you're willing to negotiate and if you can really bring something new to the economy. And uh, last but not least, uh, the option which always work if you have enough money is basically a lump sum taxation. So it's a way where you say, okay, I want to come to Switzerland, I'm a rich guy, I don't want to work because it's prohibited under this regime and I'm ready to pay certain uh, certain tax on the annual basis. So normally in most cases this is fixed so you know in advance how much tax you pay and you don't pay a single penny on top of that. Uh, normally the level of taxation would be between 300,000 Swiss francs and up to basically unlimited. So you have if you have 20 billion probably you'll pay something like 5 million per year. But normally the uh, the most of the people they pay this minimum tax which should be 
be something in the range of 300,000 to 350,000 depending on, on the on canton. Uh, importantly, five cantons out of 26 in Switzerland don't provide this because this regime was cancelled at the national, the cantonal, sorry, uh, referendums. But overall, it, it still works. So it's a relatively easy w thing to do. Uh, you just pay for, for the right to live. Now we have learned that it is possible to move to Switzerland, so I will ask Serhi what is needed to apply for residency. How much time it takes to get a residence permit so you can really hold it in your hands? <laughs> Getting the residence permit itself normally takes about two weeks, so it's basically a production time. Uh, the question is, how do you get the right to, for this tax residence permit? So depending on the route, it can take between, let's say, two weeks and a couple of months. So if we are talking uh, about the options for the wealthy individuals uh, which come into the country to pay this lump sum fixed annual tax, that that would be something between two and four months. So uh, normally uh, there, there are four four stages or four phases of what you do. First, you get prepared, so you need to plan everything in advance, collect documentation, understand which canton you would leave, and so on and so on. Uh, second option is getting the cantonal tax approval to pay this fixed tax. This normally takes between two to five weeks probably. Uh, then there is a, a migration uh, approval at the cantonal level, which goes relatively fast, a couple of weeks. And then finally, the migration approval at the federal level. So this can take a bit longer, especially for more tricky countries. So like uh, Eastern Europe, uh, Russian Federation. So normally the KYC check uh, just takes longer. But overall, uh, I would say that the route of getting into Switzerland under this lump sum option takes roughly two to four months. And if we're talking about the fees or the total cost, uh, so any Swiss, there, there's kind of a standard, let's say, fee level for this. It would be something between 20, 25 to 30, 35,000 Swiss francs for, for uh, the whole process on a turnkey basis. You mentioned tricky countries, but what are the entry rules for people from, let's say, blacklisted countries like the former Soviet Union, uh, Iraq, Syria, uh, ca some countries of Latin America, Africa? Um, well, I would say uh, Switzerland is trying to keep neutrality in this matter, so there is no formal blacklist in terms of the jurisdictions. So even, for example, Russian Federation, which is, um, let, let's say, uh, reputation-wise is not the best at the moment, uh, even the Russian citizens are allowed to enter Switzerland. So uh, it's all personalized, so I would say everything is based on the ad hoc basis. Uh, if a particular person uh, successfully undergoes the very thorough and detailed compliance check, because the country doesn't want to attract people with black history or whatever or some spoiled reputation then you're fine so it does not really depend on the jurisdiction it depends on your personality if you're if you're a good person you're allowed to enter that's more or less it can i find out if i'm a good person or not <laughs> is there any checks you can do in advance i would say that in principle it's possible to check that because um, if you're not a politician if you don't have any uh, problems with uh, tax taxation if you don't have any, let's say, uh, yellow newspapers, some bad stories about you, and this is relatively easy to check, especially in world check, for example, then uh, with a high level of probability, it's possible to understand that it's, it's going to work. What is the refusal rate for immigrants in Switzerland? Let's say from 100 applications, how many will be in the end refused? First of all, I'm not aware of any official statistics on this matter, and I strongly believe that the refusal rates would heavily depend on the route you're using. So for example, if you are uh, trying to receive the work permit and you're fighting the whole local market against Swiss people, so the refusal rate would be very high. So it's extremely difficult to get um, these uh, permit. Uh, if you are talking about the pension scheme or uh, the way to become a resident here um, uh, under some other options, um, the refusal rates might, might differ and we, no one really knows. But I can tell 
tell you that if we're talking about this annual fixed tax, which the wealthy individuals can pay, so their refusal rate is close to zero, simply because you can understand in advance what is the success chances, and uh, you, you just have uh, the chance to prepare in advance. So basically that's much easier. And from my own experience and from the experience of my colleagues in the market, I would say that it, it's very close to zero. And how flexible is the immigration process? Uh, can you do everything remotely or you need to come personally and apply in person for, for the residents? I would say uh, if we are talking about a lump sum way, uh, it, it's quite easy because you can uh, simply issue the power of attorney and you will be represented locally. It's always a very good idea to um, uh, use someone uh, in Switzerland to help you in the process because there are many, many nuances and you don't want to try all the mistakes uh, on your own. Um, this can cost you roughly between 20 and 30,000 of Swiss francs for the whole process. Process, but at the end of the day you'll, uh, you will have to come to Switzerland in person just at the final phase where you give biometrics, receive the residence card and so on. But overall the whole process is quite interesting because it has more or less four phases. Uh, first of all you need to uh, plan everything in advance, collect documentation, define the um, canton in which you are going to live, find a school for your children, whatever, uh, residence, uh, apartment, a house and many other things. Then you start the formal procedure by receiving the cantonal tax approval. So you pre-agree the fixed amount of tax you're going to pay. Uh, these uh, tax uh, ruling basically becomes your entry ticket to Switzerland. With that, you go, you go to the cantonal migration authorities, you receive the approval at the cantonal level, and then the final stage is the more or less identical approval at the federal level. So the whole process might take between two and four months and will cost you up to 30,000 Swiss francs more or less. What are the requirements and the rules to keep the Swiss residency? Do I have to live here permanently, all the time, not live in the country? What about my family and kids? How it works? Well, normally that question is asked from the other viewpoint, like how do I not become a tax uh, resident in Switzerland? But if we are talking about the people who are uh, genuinely wishing to stay here and stay the Swiss tax residents, then basically the rules are quite simple. Your main home, your warmest pillow should be in Switzerland. So of course you are not uh, forced to stay here every single day in the year. You can travel, but as a rule of a thumb, you need to spend here the most of your time, or at least you don't have uh, you don't have to have the other home which is more uh, close to your heart than Switzerland. But I would say if you're staying here for at least four or five months and, and you're really a frequent traveler, that will be fine. The problem can happen if you are trying to let's say, uh, pretend you're staying here, but, but you're not. So some people are hiding be behind, you know, high fences. They have some people who are trained to switch on the lights every second day so that to create a vision that someone is living there. But uh, those people can be kicked out of the country even though they pay high taxes. So I would say that staying here for at least half a year, that's a good idea. And honestly, I believe that the, uh, the, the vast majority of people from any part of the world would be happy to stay here because the country is, really provides a very high level of quality of life and uh, even though it's expensive it, it's worth it normally. Fantastic so I want to move to Switzerland yeah, to live here half of the year with all my family pay tax what is my next step? It's very straightforward. I won't be, I won't surprise you. You need to plan everything. So first of all, watch some videos, feel uh, how it works in Switzerland, uh, try to live here for a couple of weeks or better months just to feel the real life, not, not as a tourist, but as a potential immigrant. And then of course, get in touch with some local advisor who really knows how it works. Because if, if the person doesn't have a lot of experience, it's likely that you can face some problems. In the worst case, you will just pay a bit more, more fixed tax or it will get longer, or you can even get refused. We, we have seen that in our practice. But you just need some local support to make sure that you don't, you, you have as little number of surprises as possible. So, would you like to move and live in Switzerland as well? Or maybe, do you have any further questions? Please write in the comments. And Thierry and me will be happily answer them. All our contact details are in the description of this video. And please, like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you won't miss anything exciting in the future. That's it for today and I look forward to welcoming you to Switzerland.